Hello, welcome to the 2010 through 2011 NFL regular season schedule, week 8 picks. We're going to start off with, at 12 o'clock central time on Fox between the Redskins at the Lions. A season and a half into his NFL career, Stafford has missed as many games as he's played. I will expect him to be rusty as he's coming off the shoulder injury in the season opener. Redskins 23, Lions 15. At 12 o'clock central time on CBS, it's Jacksonville at Dallas. So there's not a lot of history between these two, between Dallas, which has won five Super Bowls, and Jacksonville, one of four teams that has never been able to get to the title game. The Cowboys and Jaguars are both out to end losing streaks. Three straight for the 1-5 hosts and two in a row for the 3-4 and four visitors. Both teams are in last place in their divisions. Dallas is one of five teams to rank in the top ten in offense and defense. The latter could be a big problem Sunday because running back Maurice Jones-Drew remains the strength of the Jaguars with 510 rushing yards. Cowboys 17, Jaguars 10. At 12 o'clock Central Time on CBS, it's Miami at Cincinnati. The Dolphins lead the all-time series at 13-5 and have won seven of their ten visits to Cincinnati. Both teams need this one, and the Dolphins are undefeated on the road this season, and they have something to prove after what happened last Sunday when they suffered a heartbreaker last week against the Steelers at home. I don't think Cincinnati matches the physicality of the Dolphins' defense, and ultimately, that will be the difference in what might be a shootout. Dolphins 30, Bengals 24. At 12 o'clock Central Time on CBS, it's Buffalo at Cincinnati. Chiefs wide receiver Dwayne Bowe has had two touchdown receptions in each of his last two games. Running back Thomas Jones is going for his third consecutive 100-yard rushing game, and rookie safety Eric Berry had his first career interception last week. Chiefs 20, Bills tw- Pete Chiefs 27, Bills 20. At 12 o'clock Central Time on Fox, it is Carolina at St. Louis. Bradford might take comfort in knowing star running back Stephen Jackson will play despite having surgery on the broken ring finger of his left, left hand Monday. Jackson has topped the 100-yard mark in three straight contests. Rams 19, Panthers 12. At 12 o'clock Central Time on CBS is Denver at San Francisco, unfortunately, in London. Gore has rushed for 251 yards the last two games, and he's averaged 95 in the last four contests after averaging 64.3 over the first three. Gore figures to have an even bigger day against a Denver run defense that ranks 30th while giving up 156.3 yards per game. The Broncos allowed 328 yards rushing in an embarrassing 59-14 home loss to Oakland last Sunday. This is the first meeting between these teams since the 49ers won 26-23 in overtime in 2006. Gore ran for 153 yards in the victory. 49ers 13, Broncos 10. At 12 o'clock Central Time on Fox, it's Green Bay at New York Jets. Tomlinson is averaging 5.3 yards per carry and already has 5 rushing touchdowns to go along with his 490 rushing yards on just 92 carries as he ranks 12th in the league among active running backs. He also has caught 19 passes for 107 yards, just 5 fewer than team leader Dustin Keller at tight end. Keller has 24 receptions for 400. 343 yards and 5 touchdowns, and wide receiver Braylon Edwards has 21 catches for 343 yards and 4 touchdowns. Sanchez is averaging an 86.4 pass rating through the first 6 games, and he has the offensive skills and has taken the leadership and ownership role of the team. The Jets are being balanced on his shoulders, and his intangibles are that he has the skill set of throwing the ball. He can take everything from east to west, and guys understand him off the field. He's great at everything on the running game through commitment, and they ground and pound, and everyone is required to do everything. Jets 20, Packers 10. At 3.05 Central Time on CBS, it's Tennessee at San Diego. The Chargers still lead the NFL in total offense and total defense, yet the team continues to self-destruct, done in by errors and turnovers that have left San Diego with a 2-5 record. Can the Chargers turn things around? Yes, on themselves. The good thing about playing the Chargers is you don't have to force turnovers. You just have to be there to pick them up. But this time the Chargers do the taking, forcing three Kerry Collins turnovers. Titans head coach Jeff 
Jeff Fisher has never beaten the Chargers having gone 0 and 6. So the luck is all in for San Diego. 30 to 27 Chargers over the Titans. At 3:15 Central Time on Fox, it's Tampa Bay at Arizona. Tampa Bay continues to get solid play from rookie wide receiver Mike Williams, who has a team high three touchdowns and leads all first-year players with 60.8 yards per game. Facing the Cardinals' second-worst run defense, 157.7 yards per game, the Buccaneers could get a lift this week from undrafted rookie LeGarrette Blount, who ran 66 of his career-best 72 yards in the second half last Sunday. Morris would like to see Blount improve on pass protection, but the team sees him as a solid complement to Williams, who is averaging a career worth 2.5 yards per carry. Tampa Bay, which has won four straight on the road dating back to last season, will try to win its first three games away from home for the first time since 2003. These franchises have split 16 all-time meetings, but I am going to say Tampa will take the series lead 19-18 to over the Cardinals. At 3.15 Central Time on Fox, it's Minnesota at New England. Wes Welker is once again the leading receiver for the Patriots with 37 catches for 295 yards and 3 touchdowns. But the return of Deion Branch in a trade from Seattle has given Brady another reliable go-to guy. Defensively, New England linebacker Jerron Merrill leads the league with 72 tackles. But I'm going to have to say, Patriots, yeah, we'll have to take a stop around my Vikings, 24-18. At 3.15 Central Time on Fox, it's Seattle at Oakland. Running back Darren McFadden is going for a third straight 100-yard rushing game against an NFC team. Zach Miller is one catch shy of becoming fourth in the Raiders tight end with, as the Raiders tight end with at least 200 career receptions. Raiders 26, Seahawks 24. At 7.20 Central Time on NBC, it's Sunday night football between the Steelers at the Saints. A meeting between the previous two Super Bowl champions. So as the Saints host the Steelers on Sunday night, is the torch about to be passed? Is the party coming to an end on Bourbon Street? The Saints' 4-3 and three chances to repeat are not yet circling the drain. But they are worn down by injuries and the lack of a threatening running game. The defending champions following a shock and loss to the, to the then 1-5 Browns are no longer feared as a team. The Steelers 5-1 are a feared team. They have already knocked off two NFC South teams, the Atlanta Falcons and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they did it without quarterback Ben Roethlisberger. Pittsburgh is not the sort of team that is going to let a frothing crowd in the Superdome distract them. No question about it, it's a pivotal game for New Orleans because they're not getting anything done when they're not putting up any points on the board. Plus, defense and Roethlisberger make Pittsburgh a real winner. Steelers 31, Saints 27. Then we conclude Week 8 of the 2010 through 2011 NFL regular season schedule between the Houston Texans at the Indianapolis Colts 7.30 Central Time on ESPN Monday Night Football. Colts quarterback Peyton Manning leads the AFC in passing with 171 of 254 completions for 1,916 yards and 13 touchdowns and 2 interceptions for a 103.4 passer rating. With Colts running backs Joseph Adai, neck and shoulder, and Don Brown hamstring ailing, running back Mike Hart could play a key role. He has rushed for 96 yards on 23 carries this season. Leadership will set up the game. Colts 21, Texans 16. And those are my picks for this 2010 through 2011 NFL regular season schedule. Remember, Philadelphia, the Giants of New York, Chicago, Atlanta, Baltimore, and Cleveland all have bye weeks. So, after all, we got...